This is uh, the Windows 8 release preview. This is going to be an in-depth walkthrough for all major features. Expect it to be a hour-long video at most, or least. We'll start with the basic from the right from login to everything you could uh, want to do with Windows 8. Once again, just quickly show you. We can sign in with a picture password, a PIN number, or my password. I prefer picture passwords the best. Okay. Your start screen. As you can see, for the most part, I hate to say this again, but since there's not many out there. There is like practically no good Metroid apps out there, so if you're wondering why there's none except for a few games, because I like to test the games and I also got a Windows tablet. I like to see the difference between touch and mouse for Metroid games or Windows RT games. Down, bottom, right corner, zoom out, same thing, right click, you can rename them. You can drag, move, up, charm bar, bottom up, inwards. Right click, they changed the all apps. It used to be on the left side, now it's on the right side. Same thing, they've got to fix this, I think. Instead of clicking all apps and seeing a screen like this by default, it should show this screen by default. I personally like this one more than I can when you click on one, it should only show you the icons within that category, but instead it shows you all of them. It's a big giant mess still. But there's an old program right there. I'm going to open up a Metroid app, just any random app. Top, grab down to close. Over here bottom left start screen, bottom left move up, no, there, top left move down, shows you your switching, you can grab, open up desktop, I'm going to do that to show you the bottom left corner, start screen again, right click it, you got your tools, top left, switch apps, grab snap back over, you got this again, your Metroid or Windows RT task manager. Same thing there. Or if I open up the program, changes. Okay. You still got, you can still do that. Um, task manage there. Windows tab now brings up that. It actually does something now in the release preview. As far as I know in the consumer preview I couldn't I couldn't Windows tab. So let's dig into Windows. And I'm not gonna show you the Metroid apps, there's other previews for that. Most of the Metroid apps are crap. Like for an instance I'm gonna bring up my email. I use Windows Live Mail way better than the uh Metroid version, because in here I can file all my, I want to grab that for a second, here I can file all four email accounts I have in one screen, I can also file I can export files individually, something you can't do in the Metroid app, so uh if you're one person like me, I keep all my emails and I keep them in separate .xml files. I've got over like 20,000 of them to date. It's kind of getting a big list for my emails, but I use that. Same thing, Windows Live Messenger works way better than the Messenger app for uh, Metroid or Windows RT. 
I use iTunes better music player than the Metroid version. I use I install Windows CC Community Codec Pack. Better movie player than the Metroid version. So other let's other dig around things. The um, remote desktop connection use the uh, desktop version. It's way better than the Metroid version again. And it's, it gives you more options. I don't know if anybody's ever dig through these options, but you get way more options in the desktop version than the actual app version, which sucks. On-screen keyboard. I can show you a little bit of it, even though it's not a touch keyboard. Oh, we can actually finally get that on the desktop. That's nice. That's what. That's the keyboard I would actually use if I was on my tablet. It's the best keyboard out of all of them, the full screen keyboard. Way better than any of these other ones for tablet use. Let's bring up the new Explorer shell. So we got the new Redefine Explorer. So depending what you're doing, let's say I want to click on the media drive, it's the best looking thing for this. Pictures. I'm going to take this picture. I can get information down this corner. I can go over to view. Change it to preview panel. I like the, I like the list too. Up here, make sure, I'm going to tell everybody to do this. Make sure you got hidden files turned on, files extensions are a must, and item check boxes. Makes life so much easier. I can click on tools. I can manage these. If I go to my music, I'll just randomly pick something out of my collection. Same thing, I could go back to view here, preview it, which it does nothing because I don't have Windows Media Player installed. I personally ripped that out. Same thing, I can go play, play all. So you get a few things, depending what you're doing, depends what this bar does. But once again, click when you set up Explorer for the first time, make sure you click this arrow in the top right corner to see it and always have it showing better than to have it showing than not having showing. It doesn't take up a lot of real estate and it's got all your tools you want for Explorer. List list view is the best thing to do. You don't need to use detail view anymore because detail view gives you all this information, right? But it's a waste of space considering you already got a detail panel. So detail view is useless. For pictures, I suppose if I went back to my pictures, Large icons and extra large, I guess, would probably be the better one than list view. That's the only time I uh, don't use list views on pictures. I guess you could, well, no, even for videos you wouldn't want to use uh, large icons, just for pictures. Let's bring up the new Internet Explorer. Now this, if I click this, should open up the Metroid version, but the Metroid version sucks. So click it, it brings up the desktop version. There's a reason why it does that. First of all, this is how I think you should set, set up Explorer. Once again, a Chromeless browser sucks. You should always have a few things showing. Favorites bar for the bottom here, it's kind of, I would like to say a must. The command bar has to be a must. It's this thing over here. You should always have that showing. And the stats bar at the bottom is very useful. So once you got it set up to something like this, which is useful, you could, if you wanted to, you could show tabs on a their separate row and have a big bar, but I think the big bar looks kind of useless now. Go to Internet Options. Blank page, I use blank page as my home page. It's the fastest loading page you could possibly ever get. Go to programs and here it says choose how you like to open links. Scroll down and go always in Internet Explorer on the desktop. Even if you're running a tablet, put it to the desktop. I would do a review using my tablet later and the Metroid version, even on a tablet, sucks. The desktop is where you want to be even on a tablet. Can't stress that enough, the desktop is where you want to be even with touching and your finger is not 
and those X's on your windows aren't actually all too small for your finger. You can do it. It's easy. So always open Internet Explorer on the desktop. Another thing to have is go to uh, Manage Add-ons. Not Manage. Well, Manage Add-ons would be a good one. Um, Go to search provider. I like to use Google. You can click down here to find more search providers. I only use Google. Go back to tools. Go to pop up blockers. Go to settings. Show notify bar when a pop up. Uncheck that and go hi, block all pop ups. Overwrite with control alt. I can't stress how much enough you should do that. It's the best way to have no. Uh, no uh, pop-ups at all. You just hold, and if you need to have a pop-up, you just hold Control Alt, and then you click on the link, and it brings it up. Nothing gets by with that setting. So that's the new Internet Explorer 10, and how to set up Metroid, how to set up the Metroid button or the Start Screen button to go to the desktop, no matter what you do. Also, I know a few people were having issues with this. Um, if you go to YouTube, I actually had to spend an hour configuring this because it would not work. On YouTube, it uses Flash, but the built-in Flash in Windows 8 Release Preview has an issue. And it puts, for me, it put YouTube in a constant crashing loop and it would not bring up YouTube. I hear Hulu has the same issue. What you have to actually do is you have to uninstall, you have to Google, uninstall Adobe Flash, find the 600k file and go uninstall, and then you have to go into the registries, and you have to blow away certain registry files. And it took me an hour, because all the registry files you blow away, you have to reassign permissions from system or a trusted installer back to your user account name, and then you have to delete it. It takes about a good hour. And once you delete all the registries containing to the Flash Player that was bundled with Windows Windows Release Preview, you have to then go back and reinstall Flash. And when you do, you actually are able to watch Flash videos again or get onto YouTube without it crashing. But it does. It takes a good hour to do it, and it's a real pain in the rear. So if you're having issues with sites that flash isn't working or if they're just randomly crashing that's why it's doing it because the built-in flash and release preview doesn't work well I use analog disk defrag I use this program for my my defragging as you can see I got good looking drives across the board I, I could almost say you can't get much better than that for looks. Um, other nifty things. Let's plow right into some cool nifty things. Right click and go to Program and Features. I'll start with this one. Turn Windows Features on. This is a must. I know some programs will not run if you don't have this checked. But by default, Net, uh, Net Framework 3.5 is not installed. You want to install that because I know a few programs such as for the dashboard for Windows Home Server 2011. If you don't have this installed, it will fail to install the dashboard. So make sure you have Framework 3.5, including 2.0 and 3.0 installed. 4.5 should stay installed. You can turn some of these on or off. It depends if you need Hyper-V. But uh, in an Explorer, I keep I get rid of I get rid of Media Player. I think it's crap and garbage. There's no need for it. It's useless. You can find better alternatives. I uncheck Windows Gadget Platform. I'm even surprised that it's still in here. I am. I'm actually quite surprised that they still have the feature in here considering, as far as I know, they killed off the Gadget Platform and the Gadget Download site from Microsoft. I get rid of Windows Identifier and a local provider. It's great for, I guess, tablets and handheld devices, but for a desktop, you don't need it. And I know some Metroid apps will use local provider and identifier foundation. Once again, I, even on a desktop, I don't, I keep search. You don't need the XPS stuff. I think they're useless in here, too. 
but uh, that's how my Windows features looks. Looks cleaned up. Don't need a lot of things. Go back to the. Now, I'm just going to bring up my flash quickly. See, for some odd reason, it's telling me that there is no ActiveX or plugin version. The default Windows installation will say that too, and after me reinstalling it and configuring it right, it's they st still say that. I don't know why, and I can't seem to get it to show my versions at all, but I do have Flash actually working. File history. If you have more than one hard drive or one partition, I highly suggest taking the time on the first time setup to walk through and configure this. This has got to be one of the best features added to Windows. It's probably one of the main reasons why it would stick on Windows 8 because of this feature. But you select a drive, which I've already got a drive selected so I'm not going to go through the setup, but you can select the drive and once you have it set up go to exclude folders and by default it will back up everything in your libraries. So what I did is I exclude my videos, pictures, music, and documents, and the reason why I do that, I don't need them backed up because I back those up to a server, and I also, also they're not on my C drive. I actually move the folders over to a USB drive. So if my C drive crashes, those files won't go down, and if the hard drive crashes, it'll have my server. But what I did do, what I did do is I added my iTunes, and I added my, I want to actually remove that. I added my I added my iTunes to back up the playlist, which is handy. And what I also did is you can add libraries. And any library you add will go get backed up. So here I added a library called backed up save files. And in here is a few things you want to add. You want to go to your username and you want to back up your app data, your roaming data. This is a must in case your C drive crashes. If you have these backed up and you restore them, and when you reinstall your programs, you don't have to reconfigure every single program because any program such as Adobe or your mail client, all their program settings are stored in your application data under your username. So if you back up the folder, it will sa it'll save you from having to re down reconfigure every program you install. I back up my desktop, so anything on my desktop will automatically get backed up. My favorites will get backed up. But uh, create create a library and start just dumping stuff that you want periodically backed up, just in case you have a hardware crash or if you want to resort something. Great is for uh, I also do it with my Steam my user data in my Steam folder because it's my save files if you're running Steam and you got a crap load of games and you want to revert back to an old save file it's great to do that. So you, you go to advanced settings and you, I back mine up every 10 minutes every 10 minutes it makes a new file if there's a change if the file does not have any sort of modifications it will not back it up every 10 minutes it only will check and back it up every 10 minutes if there is a modification you can set the offline cache and you can keep saved versions from forever default until space is needed. I think until space is needed should have been the default option because once you run out of space it will get rid of old versions and you can also clean up versions here. I don't have need to touch that but uh, if you're on a home group you can recommend the drive too and then other drives can back up to that same drive. You can also see your event log so let's say you want to back something up, you can go restore personal files. And this is going to look like a lot of files because it's backing up every 10 minutes. I have 100, 1,679 version, uh, versions already. You can just, if you had your finger, you could swipe left or right, or you could click on it. You can take a peek inside it. You can back out, you can go click here which is restore to original locations which will restore everything on this version. Or you could search, in my case I'm just going to go star dot star. And it will give it to you in a detail view. 
and then you can right click it and you can go restore, preview it, or restore to. If you click restore, it restores it to default location. If you click restore to, you can pick a location. If you preview it, you brings you back into it. But this has got to be like the best feature that Windows 8 has for for uh, backing up files without actually having to use shadow copies. And so that's definitely a feature you want to pick around is a file history. You have definitely more than one hard drive, but a partition works too. What else did they add that's worth noting? Windows Defender is now Windows... It has Windows ME and uh, not ME, Windows uh, MSE in by default, so you don't need to download another virus scan at all if you just prefer using the one that comes with Windows. You could, it's got a program called Windows File Recovery too. And this is used for creating system images. I'm not sure why it's called Windows 7 File Recovery. It should just actually be called Windows Backup now. But it does a, uh, it does complete system images. It's great if you once again have spare hard drives or a server to do it. I use the software that comes with Windows 2011 server to back up my system every morning at 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock. So there's a few things you may want to poke around. The other thing is the storage space, which is use storage to save files on two or more drives to help protect you. It's basically taking all your hard drives and making one big giant drive. Or you could use it as a software RAID for file redundancy if you wanted to. I don't use it. I got a home server for that again, so... The store has been slightly updated. They've got a lot more categories now. I wish they would just compact this into a list without pictures so I can get more categories on the screen without having to scroll would be nice. The only good Metroid app or Windows RT app by default I found was the reader. It automatically opens PDF files for you. And the only thing I noticed with this one is you can't print, and which is kind of a pain in the rear. You can't print using the Windows reader, which sucks because if you need to print a PDF file, you're back to having to download Adobe Adobe Reader, and which kind of defeats the purpose of having the uh, built-in version. But it's the only downside with that app so far. There is some programs called Start 8 Classic Shell that will still work on this release preview, and that will add a start menu back to your system. I personally don't really use it. I have shown it off just to show it works, but I don't think it's needed. Even on a mouse and keyboard, I don't think it's needed. But uh, there's a few things that Windows 8 does better than 7. As you can see, those are all the all the uh, enhancements I can show you that aren't under the hood. And once you start playing with Windows 8, I've been using it since the developers preview or developers release and definitely ever since using the consumer preview after using Windows 8 I can't go back to using anything Windows 7 or lower because it sort of sucks <laughs> and you don't realize how much the start menu actually sucks compared to the start screen well there you have it a f sort of hopefully in-depth walk through a few of the things that you can do what you should do and some of the differences between some of the desktop versions and non-desktop versions of applications. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you dig around inside Windows 8 more. And uh, yeah, I just hope you enjoyed the video.
Okay. Uh, this is the Windows release preview. This is part two. This is on my tablet. I show you the difference between the tablet version or tablet input versus uh, desktop. So we'll sign in. Once again, I can sign in three ways. For now, I'm just going to sign in using my picture password. Start screen. I can, whoops, do that, shrink it, lift up, go all programs. They changed the button. I said that earlier, but oh, same thing. Notice they got more Windows RT programs and desktop ones, but this isn't fully set up, but I've been wanting to test some of the other programs with the touchscreen more than the, trying to do it with the desktop. So we got the desktop. You can't use the bottom corners for trying to right click and bring it up your administration tools, which kind of sucks. Gonna open up Explorer once again. I got it set so it always goes to the desktop version. It's way better than the Metroid version. There's a photo. I brought that up so I can show you snapping. Same thing. Kill it. So that's how the switching between applications work. So I want to show you a few things. When you first set up, this works for tablets, laptops, any mobile device. It works for the desktop too as well, but the desktop is uh, has slightly less options than a mobile version. So if you go here, there's two things you want to do when you first set up Windows on a mobile device. Go to Event Settings. Do it says Performance, go Settings. Make sure everything that says Animation and fade is turned off. You'll speed up Windows 8 a lot just by turning off the fade in animations. You could do that on the desktop too. I have it done on my desktop but it speeds it up. Another thing to do after you first install Windows 8 and get it mostly set up, go to control panel, go to where it says power options, go create a power plan, I've already got one set up, but pick one of them, and after you have it set up, it'll show down here. So mine's called Full. Go Change Power Plan. Go uh, Change Events Power Settings. And there's a few things you want to do in here. You want to turn your hard drive off in a minute, between a minute and three minutes. Is number is a good good rule to save save your hard drive if it's not a solid state. Go where it says power button and lid. When you close the lid, do nothing. Change it to do nothing. And this will just make the screen go blank. It will not put it into sleep mode, it will not shut down, and it will not hibernate. So when you put it to nothing, you can close your lid, open it again, and you'll be exactly where you closed it. Nothing will be changed, and you don't have to go through annoying password setup and shit and stuff like that. Change the power button. When you press the power button, change it to shut down. Obviously, that makes the most sense on any device. You press the power button, you want to turn your device off. Go to where it says processor power management. Go minimum state and keep it at 100% for minimum state on both power and non plugged in. What this will do is if your CPU is a 1 gigahertz CPU, your clock frequency will always stay at a uh, one gigahertz. If you change it below a hundred percent, it will when it idles or does less intensive things, it will down clock your CPU, which is horrible because you'll lose performance. Never sacrifice performance for battery life. It's retarded for people that do that. You don't want to sacrifice performance for having a little bit more battery life. So keep your minimum processing state at a hundred percent on battery and, and plugged in. 
and then do your maximum performance state is obviously at 100% as well. Go to display. Turn display off of a minute. That will just make the screen go black, but you press something, it will be right back up. It's like closing your lid without doing nothing. It's good to do. Change display brightness. Keep it at 100% on battery plugged in as well as plugged in, so it's always the brightest it can go. Keep the uh, dim display bright brightness at 100%. That means it will never dim, even if it, you accidentally does dim, try to dim the monitor or your screen. It won't dim it at all, so you won't lose any brightness. And turn off, keep adaptive display off, so it will always stay bright no matter what environment you're on. So those are the few things you should do with the power options. So once you have your power off your setup, you're good to go. So as you see, I use I use a Winamp on my tablet because it's a small, light, compact, way better application than the Metroid version. For small music, my tower uses iTunes because my tower's got 500 gigs of music. My tablet only has a few things I pull off my server. I know I've been talking about my server a bit, a little bit on both videos, and I'll just show you. <clears throat> so this is my Windows Home 2011 server, and it's important that I always say backup. But even my server, see if I click here. If it wants to open, there it goes. See, my server backs itself up on a different drive in the server, so even my server operating system gets backed up. My tablet, which doesn't have many backups, but because it's just the same with my desktop. So, you should always back up. Prices of hard drives are coming back down, so they're not that ex they're not getting too expensive anymore. But as you see, I've got 6.9, 6.8 terabytes of hard drive space for my server. So that's where I back up my tablet, and my PC daily. My backups happen at five o'clock every morning, as well as well as my uh. My desktop uses that file history really handy. If I had a 64 gig memory card for this thing, I'd probably use file history on a 64 gig memory card on top of this. So, you got your a few things you want to do to set up a tablet. I've got I've got Word installed. Folder management. Nothing that you haven't probably already guys seen already. The big thing about the tablet versus the desktop, if you're gonna buy a tablet, buy an x86 64 tablet because having the desktop is where you want to be. Even on a tablet, the most places you'll spend is still at the desktop, and the desktop works excellent compared to doing this. I mean, who's gonna use these? Who, for the most part, is gonna start using applications? on a Windows system that does not work on the desktop. So even, even I think even from a year or two years from now people with Windows tablets won't be using Windows RT applications I don't think. Unless the Windows RT applications allow you to have it in window mode on top of the desktop so you don't have to go out of the desktop to do things or have only one program running well, being able to only use win one Windows RT program at a time with, without having to switch. So even on a tablet, 99.8% of the time, I'm sitting at my desktop. Even on my tablet, I hardly ever see the start screen ever when I load my tablet up or when I'm sitting at my desktop. Because right now as it stands, the Metroid apps are for the most part useless, even the music one. I mean, you can get better applications. 
I personally install CCC control, uh, CCC uh, community pack with the Windows Classic Player for my video. I do that on both systems. It's probably the best packages of codecs and movie software you can get, and it also works with DVD, so you don't have to get your, you know, your Windows Media Center unless you're heavily into DVRs and recording TV. I mean, the only good thing, the only thing I could probably use in Metroid applications or Windows applications like this are the games. I think the games might work well versus desktop games, especially on just tablets, but not for desktops. I mean, desktops, you want to be able to play your Call of Duty or your Battlefield, and that should never go to a Windows RT coding HTML5. It just wouldn't work. So anything like, for, so for small games it'll work fine, but for applications, I don't see it. I would rather use, I would rather use, let's say, GIMP or Photoshop than using something like AutoSketch or something to handle photo editing that's not there. I mean, so that's a little bit on the tablet interface versus a desktop interface and how things work and since I'm gonna do this to show people so I changed the rotation a bit so now I got it rotated so just to show you what it looks like when the screens rotated So that's a Windows 8 tablet for the better part. It's got your five things to touch. It's got your volumes. It's got your Windows button here that I have tinfoil over because I can't sleep with light. That's why there's tinfoil at the bottom left corner on the button because it hides the blue light. But it's still usable. I got a memory card reader for this built in. <clears throat> But that's essentially what a Windows 8 tablet would look like, no matter who you buy it from, except for some might come with larger screens, so you'll be able to snap applications. But it'll work all the same way. So, that's a Windows, verse, Windows tablet versus the desktop for input methods. Hope you enjoyed both videos.